Well, everyone, it's four o'clock and we're going to start now and we're here for the investor of Phil Troy. And uh, of course, this is a very special investor for us because it's the Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair in Engineering. And uh, we have Karen here who donated the, the, the give us the ability to have this chair. And uh, we have Myrie here also, which is wonderful. And also uh, we have John Rowe uh, joining us today uh, as, as well as Michael Galvin. So others will join during the, the time, I'm sure, but I, I wanted to recognize uh, everyone, especially our trustees and those related to Bob, because this is a really special day for us. And it's a pity we can't do it in uh, together, but uh, this will have to suffice for the moment. And these Zoom things work, so it, it's good. But first of all, I, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Karen, do you have a box that we sent you? I, I do. I think it got a bit dismantled, but I have <laughs> uh, a different thing. I have this, and oh. I have the and I have the champagne. Okay, <laughs> I, I was I was asked just to mention that so you could show uh, what was in the box. So that's <laughs> good. You got the box, and it is there. Wonderful, wonderful. So. There is a digital program for anyone who wants to look at it uh, during the, the program, but uh, at this point, uh, we've been talking to Karen and I'd like to introduce Karen. Karen Prisk is an editor, film producer, and co-founder of KPJR Films. She has executive produced three award-winning documentary films, The Big Picture, Rethinking Dyslexia, Paper Tigers and Resilience, The Biology of Stress, and The Science of Hope. Karen also serves as president of the Seedlings Foundation, where she directs resources towards programs that nourish the physical and mental health of children and families, as well as institutions that foster an educated and engaged citizenship. She received her bachelor's from Northwestern University and serves on the board of directors of Grameen America, a nonprofit that offers low-cost microloans to women below the poverty line, as well as Grameen Primacare, which offers affordable health care for immigrant women. Please welcome Karen. And Karen, uh, if you would make a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. Um, well, uh, first of all, actually, if we had done this in person, I wouldn't be there <laughs> because I would have been stuck in Connecticut. <laughs> so I'm actually, for once, glad to be on a Zoom call, but it is and nice to see familiar faces and, and new ones. Um, this chair, Phil, is, you know, um, named for my father that my late husband, Michael Vlock and I gave together with a lot of encouragement from Myrie and, um, and John's, um, uh, you know, I didn't get that. recruiting, <laughs> recruiting and, and, and representing the university so, so beautifully and being in such good hands. But my dad identified himself he, he was many things, but he identified himself as an engineer. Um, an engineer is a, is a problem solver and that's what he was and a person who, who tries to take something and make it better uh, through our human ingenuity. And IIT is a place that completely fosters that spirit of uh, making the world a better place and fill what you're doing, well, I'll get to that is is, is so much uh, what my father would have appreciated. It's combining all kinds of interesting things to make people's lives better. And um, I feel not only would he be cheering you on in your work and very happy that you have received this honor. Uh, but I think he would have really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, and uh, this, your students are, are, are lucky to have you. Um, really, this university is very lucky to have you know, all of you on this call who have been far more devoted than I have been. I, I wanted to honor and have a permanent way to continue what I thought were my dad's values. Um, and an endowed chair does that. Um, when the right person is picked. And Michael, thank you for your service and continuing as an alum and friend of the university to carry on the work our families did together, but you, you're doing all the, you know, so much of the, of the work. I, I really appreciate it. And Phil, 
everyone's going to speak to all of your accomplishments in a much better way than, than I ever could, but I congratulate you um, and am excited to see what you're gonna do next. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> it's it's you, funny to speak to, you know, six yeah. people. Yeah. Alan, you're on mute. You're on mute, Alan. Yeah, thank you very much, Karen, for everything you've done for the university. So next, I'd like to ask Peter Kilpatrick, our provost, to say a few words. Great. Thank you, Alan. So first of all, I want to offer my welcome to uh, Karen and to Myrie and Stuart and uh, uh, our new Dean of Engineering, Ken Christensen, uh, and, and John Rowe and Ernie, and of course, the, the Troik family. It's uh, so wonderful to have you all on the, on the call today. I'm gonna make a few comments about three different things. One is the importance of the endowed chair and what an endowed chair really means to the university. Uh, secondly, the importance of the Pritzker Institute and then thirdly, I'll make a comment about Phil. Um, first of all, you know, uh, I once heard it said, a university cannot be better than its faculty. And uh, I think that's so true. Uh, you know, faculty members um, really drive the intellectual life of the university. And, you know, they mentor students, they educate, they do groundbreaking research that transforms society. Uh, a university just cannot be better than its faculty. And one of the primary means that we maintain our best faculty is through endowed chairs and endowed professorships. Um, Illinois Tech is blessed, really wonderfully blessed to have roughly 10% of our tenure track and tenured faculty as endowed either chairs or professorships. And this is really speaking as an academic recruiter this is the lifeblood of the university. Um, if you can't keep your best faculty, you're in serious trouble of going downhill fast as a university. So endowed chairs are just critically important. And so we're, Karen, we're so thankful uh, for your gift of the Robert A. Pritzker chair. And we're very thankful that we're here to celebrate Phil's being invested in that chair. The Pritzker Institute, since it was uh, founded, uh, roughly 37 years ago, has been one of the premier institutes in the country in biomedical science and engineering. And I would argue in the area of translational biomedical science and engineering, it may very well be among just the handful of, of leading institutes in the country. I know a few others uh, uh, at, at other universities that strive to be in this area, but the Pritzker Institute is really one of the jewels in the crown of translational institutes. And so this is a very important area for us. We don't have uh, as large of a university as say a University of Colorado or University of Illinois or uh, other universities, even a University of Texas. Um, so what we do, we have to do extremely well and we have to focus our energies on what we do really well. And I think we do translation in biomedical engineering and science very well. And Phil Troik is one of the real leaders in that, in that area. Um, Phil uh, is the chairperson of the largest study section in, the, in NIH in translational biomedical science and engineering. He is heading up the largest translational initiative funded by NIH in uh, functional brain science. Um, in fact, we had a press release today uh, that was announced that uh, Phil uh, received along with Stuart and others, a uh, three year uh, clinical trial grant from the NIH. Um, this is in addition to the translational project. This is to do the, the human clinical trials and was awarded the first first funding uh, just recently. Um, Phil has also done some really wonderful things for the university in a short time as executive director of the Pritzker Institute. Uh, one, of, one project that Phil is really proud of, I know, 
is engaging undergraduates in research. And he started a program called ResMatch, which I think stands for Research Match, where he, he is trying to uh, bring together interested undergraduate students with faculty who wanna offer projects. And he's not only done this for the Pritzker Institute, he's done this really for the entire university because he scaled the project and it's really taken on a life of its own. So we're, we're so very fortunate to have endowed chairs at Illinois Tech. We're so very, very fortunate to have the Pritzker Endowed Chair and the Pritzker Institute. And we're so very fortunate to have Phil Troy being invested today as the Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair. So congratulations, Phil. And thank you to Karen and Myrie and everyone who's contributed to, to the events of today. Thank you very much, Peter. And now it's my pleasure to invite Ken Christensen uh, the Dean of the College of Engineering to uh, make a few remarks and then to introduce Phil. Thanks, Alan. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here today. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Pritzker family for your longstanding support of Illinois Tech, uh, including via the Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair in Engineering, the subject of today's celebration, and the Pritzker Institute of Biomedical Science and Engineering. Uh, the Pritzker Institute, as Peter said, was established in 1982, and it's clearly realizing its vision of being an influential leader and having widespread impact upon medical advances developed through novel scientific and engineering discoveries and ideas. It's also responsible for establishing a growing strength of biomedical engineering activities on campus within my college, the Armour College of Engineering. And that includes the impetus for the formation of the Department of Biomedical Engineering, which was established in 2002. One of the first faculty members that was affiliated with the Pritzker Institute was Dr. Phil Troik. Uh, as a, a young assistant professor in Illinois Tech's electrical and computer engineering department. Uh, with his expertise in neural engineering, design and development of neural prostheses, rehabilitation, and functional stimulation. His research agenda, agenda is certainly consistent with the mission of the Pritzker Institute. Similarly, Phil holds the record for the longest running tenure of any faculty member in the biomedical engineering department at Illinois Tech. Uh, as such, it's quite appropriate for him to now serve as the executive director of the Pritzker Institute and to be recognized today as the Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair in Engineering. Now, I came to know Phil uh, actually in his service on the search committee that eventually led to my hiring uh, as Dean of the Armour College of Engineering here at Illinois Tech. In those interactions, uh, I quickly came to appreciate Phil's extensive insight on Illinois Tech and his keen perspective on areas of opportunity for our institution. And I've continued to leverage his encyclopedic perspective on all things Armour College and Illinois Tech as I ramp up in my new position. Although I'm still getting to know Phil, I do hear his, ta his talents bridge well beyond his professional expertise into acting in amateur theatrical plays and in planning and hosting outstanding holiday parties. So <laughs> Phil, I, I, I look forward to learning more about both of those things as, as we get to know each other better. Uh, beyond his current role as executive director of the Prisker Institute, Phil has served in a myriad of roles on our campus from associate dean in, in my college to membership on I think nearly every department, college and university level committee that one can imagine. Uh, his service is exemplary. What, what I've really come to appreciate about Phil is the excellence he demonstrates as a leading biomedical engineering researcher. And Peter talked about some of his accomplishments. His research really spans from fundamental discovery to translational impact with an emphasis on implantable electronic devices and systems. Examples include neuromuscular stimulators for stimulating paralyzed muscles, implanted sensors for, for control of prosthetic limbs and brain interface, as well as brain interfaces. He's advised the research of over 20 masters and PhD students, number of undergraduate researchers, and Peter talked about the new initiative that he's uh, um, embarked on as, as executive director of the Pritzker Institute to to get more of our undergraduate students involved in research. 
And he's also taught a wide range of courses at the undergraduate and graduate levels. A unique aspect of Phil's excellence that I deeply value is his dedication to translating these advances to actual practice and impact. Central in this regard is a company that he founded in 2000, Cygenix, which provides neural engineering design services that are beyond that of a university laboratory. Several of his advances have gone on to clinical trial, as Peter mentioned, including his most recent accomplishment of a first of its kind artificial vision system that's being supported by a two and a half million dollar grant from the NIH. I read an article detailing this latest accomplishment and I was really struck by one of Phil's quotes in the piece. He stated, this is an incredibly exciting moment, not just for the field of biomedical science, but more importantly, for people with blindness and their loved ones around the world. This statement certainly epitomizes how Phil how dedicated Phil is to pursuing research and development in service to humanity. And I'm honored to call him a colleague in the Armour College of Engineering. Phil is also doing an excellent job as the executive director of the Pritzker Institute. Indeed, his own research approach aligns beautifully with this very important research institute on our campus. And based on your comments, Karen, it sounds like Phil and his work really epitomize what your father valued from engineering and align perfectly with, with this particular endowed chair. As Peter mentioned, endowed chairs provide a mechanism for universities to recognize the accomplishments of their most outstanding faculty members. And I'm honored to join today's celebration of Phil's accomplishments and his investiture as the Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair in Engineering. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. And uh, I believe there's a video that was, we were going to show. Congratulations, Phil. The Prisker and our chair and the directorship of the Prisker Institute provide significant resources to contribute to the mission of Illinois Tech. Best wishes for success. Congratulations. I'm very happy, Phil, for you receiving this honor in recognition of your accomplishments and contributions to Illinois Tech. And I am very excited about the next chapter of the Prisker Institute under your leadership. I wish you all the very best as you lead the Pritzker Institute to meet its full potential and reach greater success. Congratulations again. Phil Trigg's achievements truly exemplify the spirit and mission of the Pritzker Institute. Phil is a creative and strategic thinker who cultivates research and educational programs impacting both faculty and students. He embraces team-based research collaborations to facilitate their clinical translation. Phil, congratulations on this well-deserved recognition. I look forward to our partnership in supporting the research initiatives of the Institute. All right, we're at that uh, moment. Phil, I now invite your wife, Jenny Gunnerson, and your mother, Giselle Troik, to place your metal medallion around your neck as you are now formally invested as the Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair in Engineering. Congratulations, Phil. Well, Phil, it's now your turn to say a few words. Okay, I was gonna stand up, but I think I'm just gonna move up so everyone can see me a little better. So um, thank you to everyone who's here, you know, Karen Pritzker and Chairman uh, Michael Galvin, President Cram, Provost Kilpatrick, Armour Dean Ken Christensen and Myri, it's great to see you here again. And John, it's been a long time since I've seen you. And my, my colleagues, who I've worked for for many years, and in particular, Stuart Kogan, who's here, and all the members of the university who are joining in this celebration and who, who celebrate the, the richness of our faculty in general. Um, Karen, you, you, you mentioned about your father and his, uh, his dedication to the concepts that he put forth in the Pritzker Institute, and I remember that. 
I remember his passion about how, what he used to say, well, can't you just move some of this technology into the clinic? He said, can't, can't we make that go faster? And, um, and that was 20 years before the word translational research was even in the vocabulary of federal agencies. Um, I remember having engineering conversations with him, particularly about uh, his organ company and about how replacing a relay with some solid state devices just didn't have the same sound that it did. And mm -hmm. so we, we did like to, to talk about engineering and he enjoyed it very much. He came a couple of times and viewed some of our experiments that we were doing and he was very much engaged. And um, now that I'm, I'm in the position to be able to lead the Pritzker Institute, you know, I pledge to, to use this position of endowed chair to further that concept of team translational work and, and to really promote it with my colleagues in the university and outside. And, and I'm, I'm humbled and, and honored to be, to be named to the, to the Robert Pritzker chair because in knowing him and in knowing what the things he wanted, um, I, I think I can help do that. And I th think I can help Illinois Tech put its mark on the field of biomedical engineering, not just for moving translation of technology to the clinic, but also for doing what I think he wanted to do, which was improve people's lives. Thank you very much for this honor. Bill, thank you very much for those, those remarks. Uh, one of the parts of this is we always invite uh, a friend of Phil's to make some comments about Phil after uh, uh, he gets the, the chair. So uh, Phil chose uh, to have uh, Stuart Cogan to do this. Uh, Stuart's a professor of bioengineering at the University of Texas at Dallas. And Stuart, I would invite you to have a few comments on Phil at this time. Well, thank you, Alan, and, and, and thank you, um, everybody, uh, for this opportunity, really, to make a few remarks and perhaps some uh, observations on Phil. So it's with pleasure and with honor that I do this on behalf of Phil for this, what I think is going to become a very notable, uh, notable occasion. So I've known Phil for uh, 30 years, for some 30 years, and my first encounter with Phil actually involved a bet. And um, I know that Phil remembers this uh, very well because he won the bet. It was a bet over technology. And that was my mistake to bet against Phil in uh, knowledge and uh, development when it came to uh, integrated circuits. So from that time, was, we have been uh, close collaborators and very good friends. And I deviate a little bit from the, <clears throat> not really from the spirit, but from the, the focus uh, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the other parts of Phil Troik. And uh, there's really not enough time for me to, to tell all the stories that I have uh, collected of Phil over the last 30 years. But I think there's one, there's one in particular that I think is a very appropriate uh, and that I have to uh, tell. And uh, this took place in Australia in about 2011. Now it's an international neural engineering conference in Sydney and Phil wrote a song and sang a song at the podium to the full meeting audience. And the song was about securing an investigational device exemption, an IDE, for a vision prosthesis. And as we know, an IDE is a necessary step to a clinical uh, trial. Well, Phil sings very well. It was a delightful song. It was sung to the tune of Waltzing Matilda, very appropriate. It was very clever and very funny. And it won great laughter and applause. And now, if we had enough time, I suspect if we asked nicely, Phil would be willing to sing a few bars of that <laughs> song. Yeah? But I won't, I won't embarrass him, <laughs> put him on the spot. But nonetheless, uh, it, it was a very, very humorous and funny time. Anyway, the, the point of this is that Phil has now just secured this IDE and the intracortical vision prosthesis project, which we've heard a little bit about, which is for creating artificial vision in, in those with blindness, is now recruiting participants. 
So after all this time, it's happening. Now, which, is, which brings us really, or brings me to uh, talk about what makes Phil so deserving of this endowed chair. So with, with absolutely no pun intended, Phil has demonstrated remarkable vision and determination in bringing the vision prosthesis project to this point, to the point that participants have been recruited for a clinical trial. Now, as I think you know, and as uh, I think uh, Robert Pritzker would understand very well, you know, it's one thing to articulate a vision, but it's quite another to actually achieve that vision. And this is one thing that we can say about Phil. There is always substance behind his endeavors. He's an excellent engineer, and we, which we have no doubt about, but he's also someone who's not satisfied with anything but a measurable and substantive outcome. And this is true whether he's driving medical device development, managing an organization, or, or creating research opportunities for students. All this is done by Phil with flair, <coughs> innovation, and with, with an eye to success. And you know, none of this, of course, can be achieved in isolation. And the one thing I've observed in Phil over the years is an ability to form and inspire effective teams. And I think this is something I believe he will also pride himself in. And the vision prosthesis team is, is an excellent example. And he's held this team together for perhaps a, perhaps a decade, even two decades and for some of us like me. And he's always fresh, enthusiastic, and demanding as he was 20 years ago. So he's a leader, he inspires, but let me say, he, with no tolerance for nonsense, and he leads by example. So for me personally, it has been a pleasure, and it's been an honor to work with Phil on the Vision Prosthesis Project and on many other projects. And I look forward to many more new projects. So I think, the, these attributes that Phil has, vision, scientific rigor, determination, and collegiality are going to serve him very well leading the Pritzker Institute. And I really look forward to seeing what he creates, where it will take him, where it will take the Pritzker Institute, and where it may take Illinois Tech. So Phil, congratulations. This is very well deserved. It is my honor to have you as a colleague and a friend. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Stuart. And now as we get near the end of this uh, ceremony, it really is my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the board, Michael Galvin, and I can think of no one more appropriate than a Galvin to talk at a Pritzker uh, event at Illinois Institute of Technology. So Michael, would you make some comments? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Alan. And it's uh, so great to be here, uh, Phil, with your wife and mother, uh, albeit virtually, uh, but virtual as we are. I just want to join the chorus of all those that are saluting you today, Phil, on becoming the new Robert A. Pritzker Endowed Chair for Engineering. I mean, we really, really look forward to following your many successful endeavors at Illinois Tech as we have in the past and the opportunity to toast you in person at some point in time, uh, the next time we can all get together. And, you know, Karen, um, uh, it's, it's humbling, you know, for me to be able to, uh, you know, follow in the, in the Galvin, you know, uh, Pritzker co collaboration at Illinois Tech and to join you and, and congratulating you for not one, but two Robert E. Pritzker endowed chairs in engineering at Illinois Tech. And uh, I don't have to tell you that your, you know, your chairs celebrate among the best and the brightest faculty at Illinois Tech uh, as, uh, you know, our, our new uh, endowed chair, Phil uh, Troy, exemplifies in spades. So congratulations again to you, Phil, and cheers to your continued success. I look forward to toasting with you at some point in person, as I know everybody else does as well. And I just want to thank everybody else for taking the time uh, to celebrate with Phil today because this is a great accomplishment for him and just a great contribution to our university. So 
have a wonderful we evening, everybody, and good night. And as somebody said to me yesterday, uh, stay positive and stay negative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, meaning uh, negative in terms of your test for COVID. So um, thanks all. I really appreciate it. Congratulations, Phil. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Congratulations, Phil. Thank you, everyone.